Good afternoon, everyone. It's David Schlothauer here with another detailed update on potential tropical cyclone one for Monday, June 17th, 2024. So just after my previous video release earlier this afternoon, we have now our first advisory on potential tropical cyclone number one. This is not an official tropical storm yet. It does not have a name, Alberto, yet but eventually it might end up being that way based on our latest models that I'm about to show you. So this is a look at the latest GOES-16 True Color Visible Satellite Imagery, actually the visible spectrum. We can see that the system is trying to get better organized just a little bit. We have a little bit more deeper convection trying to develop within the lowest pressure where the surface circulation is trying to form. And we can see indications that the center is no longer on land because if we look at the satellite imagery, we have west northwesterly wind here. We have westerly wind here and winds kind of come around on the other side out of the south and wrapping all the way around. So I'm thinking that the low level center might be somewhere over here now off the coast of, say, the Bay of Campeche in the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico, which means that the system might start becoming more better organized given where it's at right now with very warm sea surface temperatures in the mid 80s and plenty full of moisture. So I do wanna be clear in my video, this is not a named storm. Again, it's a potential tropical cyclone. This means that they're fairly confident that this could become a tropical storm with a more well-defined center with more organized deep convection and heavier rainfall within the next couple of days. Right now, winds are at 40 miles an hour or about 65 kilometers an hour. It is moving to the north-northwest at 345 degrees at 7 miles an hour. So this is moving now to the north-northwest, which is a little bit more surprising than what I thought earlier, where I thought it was moving more due westerly. So the concern here now is it's moving nor more north-northwest, which means it's moving away from land and it's moving over the open waters of the Gulf. And with the Gulf as warm as it is with a lot of upper ocean heat content, this has some potential at becoming a fairly robust tropical storm in the next one or two days. Because of that, a tropical storm watch has now been issued for Texas coast from Port. So because of that, a tropical storm watch has been issued for the Texas coast from Port O'Connor southward to the south of the Rio Grande coast. So this is a bit of a concern. The government of Mexico has also issued a tropical storm watch for the northeastern coast of Mexico south of the mouth of the Rio Grande to Baca de Catan can't speak Spanish, but you get your you get that idea that there's already tropical storm watches issued. Interests elsewhere along the coast of Texas and northeastern Mexico definitely need to monitor the progress of this system and additional watches or warnings could be issued required tonight or on Tuesday. So this is not over. This can bring a lot of impacts, folks. Just because it's a potential tropical cyclone or a tropical storm, we're going to be seeing a lot of rain and a big amount of wind with this system. And when we take a look at the latest National Hurricane Center with their cone of uncertainty, that's this cone highlighted in white. This indicates where the center could potentially move over. This is kind of the, the uncertainty that lies in the models. And right now we do have a fair amount of uncertainty. The center of this could still go as far north as just basically the tip of Texas to as far south as, as or as far north, I should say, as southern Texas or as far south as, say, central Mexico there. So definitely a big concern and look at how large the wind field here of tropical storm force winds are so that's also very important just because the center moves right here if you do the math that the tropical storm force winds could still impact southern texas yeah power outages storm surge coastal flooding coastal impacts lots of problems this is a system to not mess with at all and i'm only doing my part at making sure you all are prepared and this could make landfall as early as, say, Wednesday late night into early Thursday morning. When it comes to the rain amounts, these are very, very concerning and 
potentially life-threatening. So El Salvador, you could see up to 25 to 30 inches of rain locally. Some areas even breaching 16 to 20 inches. Now up here where we do have that system moving onshore, um, we could see as much as say 8 to 12 inches of rainfall. So possibly a foot of rain. But not only that, if we look at Texas here, there's also a lot of rain that is anticipated. Especially for Corpus Christi, you might see eight to potentially as much. Potentially, this is still far out right now. We could see as much as 12 inches or a foot of rainfall. San Antonio, as much as six inches. Junction, possibly four to six inches of rain. Waco, Texas, two inches. Albaline, two inches. Midland, potentially up to about an inch to a couple of inches of rainfall. And yes, even southern Louisiana, you might get a couple of inches of rain out of this. So a big, big rain producer storm. And therefore, there's already a moderate risk for heavy rainfall and flood concerns over San Antonio, Houston, Texas, Corpus Christi, if trends continue, there could even be a rare high risk of flash flooding and also some heavy rainfall for these areas because of how moist this system actually is. Just because you might not see tropical storm force winds on shore over San Antonio, you could certainly get inches upon inches of rainfall and over a very populated area, we could see street flooding, urban flooding, and a lot of problems. To make matters more concerning, this is the National Blend of Models. This is the NBM forecast highlighting again southeastern Texas here that could see as much as 6 to potentially 12 inches of rainfall right along the coast could see the most over Corpus Christi and Houston, Texas. So now, what are the chances of tropical storm force winds arriving in your doorstep? Well, this is from the National Hurricane Center, and there is already a non-zero chance here for southern Texas, like say if you are in McAllen, there is a already 5 to even 10% chance that tropical storm force winds could impact your area. And along much of the coast here of northern Mexico, or northeastern I should say, there is a 5 to 10% chance of tropical storm force winds arriving in your area by Wednesday early morning with heavy rainfall and some coastal impacts such as storm surge. It's not just the wind, the heavy rainfall that you're gonna see with this system. There's also gonna be the risk for storm surge. Here's a look at the peak storm surge forecast from the National Hurricane Center, and it does highlight from Sargent um, Bay, a little bay there, all the way to Sabine Pass. There could be as much as four inches of rain, or, or as much as four inches, or four feet, I should say, of water Moving up into the bay there, Galveston Bay, as much as four feet of water could cause some streets to be underwater, cars could be submerged. This is not a good sign at all, with one to three feet of storm surge across the mouth of the Rio Grande area, as well as Vermilion Bay and portions there of Cameron Parish Line in Louisiana could have some storm surge. Also, one last thing is here's a look at the National Blend of Models for your wind speed forecast at the surface over the next 60 or so hours and we can see winds could be as strong as say 30 to 45 miles an hour along the coast here of texas with wind gusts exceeding 45 to even 55 miles an hour some peak wind gusts in the favored locations could exceed 65 miles an hour that will be enough to blow down trees power lines blow some roofs off as well as some infrastructure damage because of these onshore winds and they are going to come in in this situation and that's going to help to pile up a lot of those gulf of mexico waters along the coast of texas into those four bays as well so this is a pretty serious situation and i want to make sure you all are prepared as always that really concludes this video with the potential tropical cyclone number one issue that we're dealing with here in the bay of campeche in the gulf of mexico my job here is at making sure you all are prepared for the latest on this system as it remains a threat. And as long as this remains a threat to any land areas, I will be providing some live stream coverage on this if necessary. If this becomes any more organized, we might have to do that in the next couple of days. Um, and also, um, we will continue to make video content, otherwise at least one or two videos a day, as this also remains a threat to localized residents. 
All right. Anyways, that's going to do it. Share, like, and subscribe, and I'll be back with you more soon.